Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. We take you now to Police Lineup. Sit here. Sure, sure. Any chair in the room, Mr. Holmes. You'll sit beside me, Lieutenant Guthrie. Sure. I hope I didn't do wrong about that boy, Lieutenant, but I'm pretty sure there was a bullet hole in that coat. You did just right. Like the other people here, you've all come to try to identify someone in the lineup for one reason or another. May I have your attention, please? And that's Sergeant Greb in charge of the lineup. He'll explain it to you. Oh. You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? <coughs> Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I will explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you are sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They are seated among you. Please be prompt with your questions or identification. <coughs> Lieutenant. Oh, sure, sure. Go ahead, Mr. Hope. Light up. Relax. Thanks. Thanks. When the prisoners leave here, they are sent to the bathroom and dressed back into their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Bring on the line. All right, boys, this way. You, the front one. Walk the end of the stage and take your place. The rest follow. Now turn around and face front. Hands to your sides. Look straight ahead. Hey, you, hold your head up. Look straight ahead so the people out there can see you. That's right. Number one, George Marvin, concealed weapon. Where do you live, George? I live downtown. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Where do you live? I said I live downtown. Where downtown? What street? A Moon Hotel on uh, Front Street. How long have you been in town, George? Three days. Did the officer find a gun on you? Yeah. What kind? 32 on a 45. Number two, James Hodge, theft. How long have you been in town, Jimmy? All my life, 23 years. Where do you live? 1215 Pennsylvania Avenue. Were you armed when the officer arrested you? No, sir. Never owned a gun in my life. Number three, Mickey Bianco, robbery. Where do you live, Mickey? I... I don't know, sir. Where'd you sleep last night? Mission House on Ruxton Avenue. Was anyone arrested with you? Yes, sir. Fell next to me. Number four, Harry Greco, robbery. Was anyone arrested with you, Harry? Yeah, the kid you just talked to. Known him long? Yes, sir. That's how long. Did you have the gun the officers found, or did Mickey? <coughs> me, it was, sir. A loser. It was mine. Are there any questions or identifications from the audience? No, any questions or identifications from you people out there? Hold number two, Sergeant. All right, Lieutenant. The rest of you boys go through this door. You, Jimmy Hodge, stay. All right, Jimmy, turn sideways. Face the wall. Turn sideways. To the front. How long since you shaved, Jimmy? One day, I shaved yesterday. This man has a slight half-moon scar on his right cheek, obscured by his beard. Height, 5'8". Uh, does anyone make identification? I'm sure that's him, Lieutenant. All right, Mr. Holt. Sergeant Graham. Yes, Lieutenant. Hold for interrogation. In here, Jimmy. Now, uh, you can sit down. Thank you. Oh, Ben, I picked up the release forms on a couple of the boys in the lineup. We're letting them go. No one identified them. I run them down to communications? Sure, go ahead. And grab yourself some coffee. <laughs> I'll do that, thanks. Whew. It's a hot night, huh? Yeah. <sighs> Here's a hot night. You can turn on that fan if you want it, Jimmy. Yes, sir. The switch is right behind you on the wall. Okay. Cigarette, Jimmy? 
I still have some of my own, sir. Yeah, light up. Go on. My name's Ben Guthrie, Jimmy. I want you to understand the law is as much on your side as it I is... I know all about that, Mr. Guthrie. Yeah, I guess you do. Where'd you get that coat you tried to sell, Jimmy? I told the arresting officer. Well, tell me, too. Got it from a man I worked for sometimes. I sweep up and clean the windows. Now, what's his this, name, uh, Jimmy? Mr. Roy Cameron. He's got a little jewelry shop, 12th Street. He calls on, on me now and then. And Mr. Cameron gave you the coat? Yes, sir, he did. Why would I lie about a thing like that? You can ask him. We will, Jimmy. He gave you a coat. Now, why do you suppose he gave you a woman's coat? You wouldn't have any use for a woman's coat. I don't know why he gave it to me. I guess he just wanted to be kind. He knows I got a sister. Oh, but you didn't give it to your sister. You tried to sell it. Why? Why? Because I don't make much money, Mr. Guthrie. I thought I could pick up a couple of bucks easy. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you try to sell it the usual way, to a friend or an old clothes shop, something like that? I did. They thought I'd stole it just like that man did who yelled for the police. And all I did was come out of that alley and sell him an old coat. Where's the coat now, Jimmy? Well, after I ran away, I gave it to my sister Ruth. Ruth Hodge? Yeah. And we'll check. This Mr. Holt, that's the man who had you arrested and identified you tonight in the lineup. Do you know what made Mr. Holt really suspicious of you? A lot of things, I guess, because it came out of the alley and because... Because in the back of the coat, he saw a bullet hole. Mr. Holt says to him it looked like a bullet hole. A bullet hole? I didn't know anything about that. Mr. Cameron gave me the coat all wrapped up. I didn't even see until that man asked me to unwrap it and show it to him. I don't know nothing about a bullet hole, nothing about it. That's all, Jimmy. Roy Cameron on 12th Street? Yes, sir, that's the man. Just ask him, just ask him, Mr. Guthrie. Anyone here? Mr. Cameron. We're coming, coming. Sorry, mister, I was just in the back room brewing myself some coffee. Good morning, may I help you? Watch and engagement ring? Oh, yes? I'm Ben Guthrie, police, Mr. Cameron. Oh, let us shake hands, Mr. Guthrie. Thank you. I respect you men very highly, all you police. We're holding a boy on suspicion, Mr. Cameron, uh, Jimmy Hodge. Do you know him? Jimmy, of course I know him. Is he in trouble? No. Uh, before you tell me, please come into the back room and have a cup of coffee with me. Uh, please, Mr. Guthrie. Well, thanks, I will. Good. Uh, through those curtains. Yeah, listen to it. It's perking. Take a cup off that hook, Mr. Guthrie. Mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy said you uh, gave him a woman's coat. Say when. Oh, and thanks. The uh, boy said you Did gave... I him... gave him the coat? Hey, anybody here? Stop! Oh, excuse me, Mr. Mr. Guthrie, customers. Uh, make yourself at home. I'm, I'm coming, coming. Uh, good morning. Uh, may I help you? Oh, mind if we look around, Pops? My wife and me are looking for a... Uh, we don't know, something pretty. Okay, we look around? Please, uh, browse all you like. When you've decided, just call me. I'll be in the back room. I'm having coffee with a friend. Yeah, sure. Go right ahead, Pops. My wife and me get all the time in the world. Oh, you finished your cup, Mr. Guthrie. Another? Uh, no, thanks. About Jimmy Hodge, Mr. Cameron. Oh, yes, yes. So, so many interruptions. Uh, the coat. Yes, I gave it to Jimmy. He works hard. I thought it would... What's Jimmy done, Mr. Guthrie? When did you give it to him? Yesterday afternoon when he finished work, about 5 o'clock. What's Jimmy done, Mr. Guthrie? Something bad? It was a girl's coat. It had a bullet hole in it. I know. What? You said something, Mr. Cameron. You said you knew it had a bullet hole in it. I know. It was Anita's coat. My daughter's. The coat she was murdered in. My child, Anita. Then yes. you're... Yes. The father of a murdered girl. Two months ago, Mr. Guthrie, you must remember it. Yeah. Yeah, I do. This is a happy day for me, Mr. Guthrie. Tomorrow, Saturday, will be happier. 
Tomorrow night at 10 o'clock, we'll be much, much happier. Oh? Yeah. Tomorrow at 10, the man who killed my child, Anita, will be executed for murder. Tomorrow. That's why I respect you police, Mr. Guthrie. You'll kill him tomorrow, Saturday. Looking for you. Oh, hello, Ben. I was just getting ready to go. Pardon me. Sergeant, grab. They're ready to run him through the lineup, Sergeant. Oh, I'll hey, be tell right. Tell him to hold it a minute. Oh, yeah. I'll be with you in about ten minutes, officer. Right. What's on your mind, Ben? You once ran a boy through the lineup named Charles Dixon. Get out his files. Prince? Galley? Uh, no. Charles Dixon murder. Convicted a couple of months ago in a hold-up shooting. Papers called it the Anita Cameron case. Oh, yeah. I remember. Well, Dixon slated for execution Saturday night. Why, that's tomorrow night. Yep, that's the one. Well, what is it, a last-minute plea? The DA want the files? No, me. Oh, sure. Well, by the way, did you get the 415 report I put on your desk? No, haven't been upstairs yet. Well, maybe I can save you some time. An alley attack on a woman off Pennsylvania Avenue. Yeah, what about it? Woman's name is Ruth Hodge. Ruth Hodge? Well, that kid we had in the lineup last night, Jimmy Hodge, his sister's name was Ruth. Oh? Well, anyway, she's at St. Anthony's Hospital. I just thought I'd let you know. Ruth Hodge. Jimmy gives her a coat with a bullet hole in it, and she gets beaten up. Do a thing for me, Matt. The files? Files on Charles Dixon. Get them. Wow, well, there's isn't much time. That kid's slated to die Saturday night, and that's... that's... tomorrow night. Get the files, Matt, and while I'm gone, read them. Read them carefully, Matt. Miss Ruth Hodge? Yes, Doctor. I'm a policeman, Miss Hodge. My name's Ben Guthrie. I've already been questioned. You police did that already. I know. I'm afraid I'll have what to What do ask you want to know? What happened? Who beat you up? I told them. I told them all about well, it. Well, tell me. Who beat you? I don't know. I don't have any new answers, Mr. Guthrie. A man wanted your money, is that it? The police keep telling me that's it, but it's not that at all. All right. What is my coat. The man wanted the coat I was wearing. Oh? I told him that. The coat your brother gave you? Yes, Jimmy gave me that coat. Well, all right, Jimmy gave it to you. Now, then what? I don't know. Well, it's important that you should know, Miss Hodge. Jimmy gave you the coat. You put it on and wore it. Yes. Well, didn't you care that it had a hole in the back of it? What? The hole in the back of the coat. Oh, it didn't show much. Well, all right, what happened? I walked into the side street, the one that looks like an alley off Pennsylvania Avenue. Penmore Place, it's called, where I live. Uh, go on. A man was there, standing in a doorway, I guess. Walked up in the back of me and whispered in my ear. He said, don't turn around, but that he'd give me $10. He said it was for the coat I was wearing. Well, then what? I screamed. He started to hit me, tried to tear the coat off of me. He said, stop screaming, but I didn't. Guess he got scared. He ran. Would you recognize the man? No, he was in the back of me. I told you. Uh, yes, you did. Where's the coat now? It's hanging over there, Mr. Guthrie. It's in the closet. Mm -hmm. This one? Yes. Take it, Mr. Guthrie, take it. I don't want it anymore. Close the window, eh, Ben? All right. You could stop swiveling, too. What time is it, Ben? You asked me that five minutes ago. What are you trying to build, Ben? A boy named Charles Dixon is going to be executed at 10 tomorrow night, Saturday. For a murder maybe he didn't do. You going to prove it? That with that dressmaker's dummy you had me drag up here? This coat. It's got to mean something. Put it on the dummy again. You mean what's left of the coat, don't you? Okay, there it is. Turn it around. We've been doing this since 8 o'clock. I asked you, what are you trying to build? I told you, a boy's life. Look, Ben, 
Eight o'clock, I brought this dummy into your office. Then I dress it with a dead girl's clothes, Anita Cameron's blouse, Anita Cameron's coat. The bullet hole in the blouse matches the bullet hole in the coat, right on the same line. 10 o'clock, it still matches. 10.30, coffee. Yeah. 11 o'clock, we've torn the coat apart. Nothing. 11.30, we got a torn up coat. There's got to be something there, Matt. That coat's got to mean something. Now, first of all, it wasn't mentioned in the transcript of the trial. I called Cameron about that. You know that. The man just forgot to mention it. That's all. That's human. When he found his daughter, he took the coat off her to try to help her with her wound. Then why was Ruth Hodge beaten up for the coat? Well, maybe the guy liked women's coats. Uh, I'll go over it again for you, Ben. Two months ago, one Charles Dixon held up the jewelry store of one Roy Cameron. In the process of the holdup, he shot Anita in the back, her father being upstairs at the time. Uh, tell me about those witnesses again, Matt. Uh, two witnesses, Vern Meredith and Grace Duncan. They were walking home from a dance. They saw Dixon with a gun in the girl's back. The girl had her hands up in the air. They heard a shot. They called the police. How did they know it was Dixon? They didn't. They noted the license number of a car parked with its motor running. Mm. Later, this car was found parked in front of Charles Dixon's house. In it was found the gun, the loot, and Charles Dixon, dead drunk. Can I go home? Yeah. Now Dixon's in a death cell waiting for tomorrow night. Waiting for Saturday. Can I go home now? What time is it, man? It's Saturday. You are a witness behind the scenes at police headquarters as we bring you Police Lineup. Mr. Meredith, uh, Vern Meredith. He lives here? Yes. May I see him, please? Well, he's busy just now. I'm Mrs. Meredith. Can I help you? I'm from the police, Mrs. Meredith. I want to talk to your husband. Well, I told you he's... Well, I'm sure I could tell you whatever you want to know. Tell him it's about the Anita Cameron case, Mrs. Meredith. Oh. Tell him, Miss Meredith. I think he'll want to talk to me. Oh, of course. Of course he will. Please, come in. We're in the kitchen. Vern's having his breakfast. Please excuse how things look. We get up sort of late. Uh, Vern? Vern. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want? It's a man from the police. He wants to... Vern, put down the newspaper. It's a man from the... Yeah, yeah, I heard you, Grace. Well, I just read this item to Grace when you knocked on the door, Mr... Mr. what? Guthrie, Ben Guthrie. Oh, Mr. Ben Guthrie. I was reading her. She likes it when I do that, don't you, Grace? Sure. Sure, mm. I like it, Vern. This item. Coincidence. Says the case of Anita Cameron is being scratched over by a man named... Uh... Now, let me see. Guthrie. Ben Guthrie. You the same? Yes. Well, it says here he's trying to save the killer's life. This is a twist for a cop, ain't it, Mr. Guthrie? Vern, please. Tell me exactly what you saw and what you did the night of the holdup. Oh, it's on the record. Very clear, very public. Anybody can read it. I didn't get around to it, so tell me. We were at a dance. We were walking home. You were with him, Mrs. Meredith? Then, then you're Grace Duncan, the other witness. Yeah. Yeah, Grace Duncan. Now, Mrs. Vern Meredith, huh, Grace? We... But I'll do the talking, huh, Grace? Yeah, Mr. Guthrie, we were at a dance, Grace and me. What dance? Same like I testified, the Eagle Social Club on Benton. Vern was walking me home. I'll and... tell him, Grace. I walked her home because that's romantic to walk a girl home. We stopped to look at a jewelry store window and see this Charles Dixon holding up a girl. How could you tell it was a holder? <laughs> Question. She had her hands up in the air. Girl does that for other reasons. How did you know it was Dixon? On the record. 
After the shot, we took down the license number. You cops found out it was Dixon, not us. Mrs. Meredith. Yeah. Was the girl wearing a coat when she was shot? Well, yes, uh, may she... I? The girl was wearing a coat. Anything else? No, Vern. Nothing else. Not now. Thank you, Mrs. Meredith. Charles? Charles Dixon. My name is Ben Guthrie, Charles. I'm a policeman. I want to know... Policeman? I want to know what... what? I'm going to be electrocuted. What do you want me to say? Anita Cameron. I killed her. I shot her in the back. Did you? They told me I did. I believe I did. They keep telling me I did. I believe it. You went into the jewelry shop to rob it. Anita Cameron came downstairs when she heard a noise. You made her turn around and shot her in the back. Is that what you did? What? Listen to me. Yeah. You're sure of it, then? You murdered Anita Cameron? I was drunk. I was at a dance, and I got drunk. Why did you get drunk? I did it before. I liked it. You don't understand, do you? I'm trying to help you. Did I tell you? I want to be electrocuted. That they say it won't hurt... Did you know, when they kill a man, electrocute him, it's painless. Think, Charles. Think of something to tell me. Something I can go on someplace it'll take me. Someone I can talk to. What happened that night when you were drunk? Why did you leave the dance? I was drunk. Did you have the gun when you left the dance? Drunk. Why did you tell her to turn around before you shot her? Almost the way I feel right now. Drunk. Then you don't really remember? You don't remember a thing? I killed her. They keep asking me to say so. They say a, a man always confesses before he's electrocuted. Makes a man feel better. So I'm saying it. I killed her. And I don't feel anything at all. <laughs> Talking to you, Ben. Uh-huh. Ah, uh, why don't you go home? Why? What worries you, man? Ah, sitting there like that for hours. And? Man, nothing, Ben. Just why don't you go home? What time is it? Three more hours. I didn't ask you that. I said, what time is it? Seven o'clock. Look, uh, I I'm due over at the lineup. Nobody's stopping you. Coffee, Ben. I brought you some. Didn't you do that a little while ago? Oh, yeah, that got cold. This is nice and hot. You think Charlie Dixon killed that girl? You want an honest answer or an answer that'll make you feel good? Just an answer. Okay, I think he killed that girl. No matter what's eating you, Charles Dixon will die in two hours because he killed her. You're through talking? Yeah, I'm through. Then what are you hanging around for? Matt, come in here. Yeah. Yeah, well, what do you want? Why did someone beat up a girl to get that coat back? Oh, you asked me that 15 minutes ago. I still don't know. How did they know about the coat the same time I did? I don't know. How? How? How you sloshed your coffee. How did they know about the coat the same time I did? I've been telling you, Ben, I don't know. Call up Cameron's jewelry shop. Get me Cameron. It's nine o'clock, Ben. Let the poor guy alone. Call him. Okay, Ben, okay. Let me look up the number here. Let's see now. Oh, yeah, there. Yeah. 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 
Give me that oh, phone. Don't bite my head off for a lousy phone here. Come on, come on. Hello? Mr. Cameron? Yes? This is Guthrie, Mr. Cameron, police department. One question. What do you want, Mr. Guthrie? Who was in your shop when I was talking to you? Who was in your shop? Oh, don't yell at me, Mr. Guthrie. I was trying to think. It was, um, I remember now, it was Vern and Grace Meredith, but they left the store. They didn't buy anything. Don't take your hat off, Matt. We're going out. We'll be ready in just a... Oh, I thought it was a cab. Going someplace, Mrs. Meredith? Well, I... Uh... Sergeant Greb just asked you if you were going someplace. That the cab, Grace? No, it, it, it's not... No, it's not the cab, Vern. Oh. oh, it's you, huh? What do you want here? Relax, Mr. Meredith. We're just talking to your wife. You going someplace, Grace? Why all the bags back? Well, we... well, that's simple. He's talking to Mrs. Meredith. We're going on a little trip, that's all. When did you get married, Grace? In March. March the 3rd. I got it right here inside my ring. Here, I'll show you. Yeah, the day after Anita Cameron was murdered, wasn't it? An impulse. Grace and me, impetuous. Or a wife can't testify against her husband? Grace, how did your husband kill Anita Cameron? <laughs> you kid. Shut up, Vern. You asked your wife. Vern. Was it like this, Grace? You waited outside until Vern was robbing that storm. Then Anita came in and surprised him. Vern, what? He you... held a gun on her, made her turn around and shot her in cold blood. Charles Dixon did that, remember? That's why he's going to burn. Then you both got scared, Grace. You saw Charlie Dixon passed out in his car. You planted the gun and whatever you stole in the glove compartment. It was like that, wasn't it, Grace? No. No. Tell him no, Vern. Where'd you get the gun, Vern? I never had a gun. But you know how to shoot one. I never had a gun. You have a record of robbery in 43. It said you had a gun. I was never convinced. Why did you Kill Anita. You're crazy. In 43, you had a gun. You said you never had a gun. All right. So I had a gun. Is that the gun you used to kill Anita? When I was arrested in 43, the police kept that gun. Then you used another gun to kill Anita. Dixon killed Anita. What about the coat? What coat? What are you talking about? What coat are you talking about? The coat about? Anita was wearing when you shot her. <laughs> Look, look, we gotta catch a kid. The coat, Vern. You beat up a girl to get it back on Pennsylvania Avenue. You hid in an alley and beat up a girl to get the coat back. Why? Vern, Vern, I told you. Shut up. 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 Leave her alone. Come on, I said leave her alone. Get you. Okay, Vern. Over there. Over there and face the wall. Clasp your hands over your head. Look, what is this? You heard him. Against that wall. All right, all right. Like this? You did fine, Vern. Sit down, Grace. Matt. Huh? Get her a glass of water. Okay. Where's the kitchen? Uh, right through that door. All right. Uh, here you are, Mrs. Meredith. <laughs> Your husband's a murderer, Grace. Oh, you're wrong. You're wrong. The coat he tried to tear off a girl's <laughs> no. back proves it. Don't talk to him, Grace. He's fishing. He don't know anything. Grace... When you and Vern were in the jewelry store, you heard me talking to Mr. Cameron about the coat. So Vern knew it was important. Now I know why. He didn't do it. He didn't Look at do your it. husband standing over there, Grace. I don't know what you're trying to do. He's got his hands clasped over his head. A coat rises when a person does that. If I shot your husband in the back, the bullet hole in his coat would be a couple of inches lower than the one in his shirt. Oh, Vern, make them stop. The make bullet them stop. hole... The bullet hole in Anita's coat was in line with the one in her blouse. That means her hands weren't in the air like you told us. You lied at the trial, Grace. You lied because your Vern here killed Anita. Now listen to him, Grace. I'll trick you. No, take your time, Mrs. Meredith. Think about it. Got a cigarette, Ben? Mm-hmm. Here. Oh, thanks. You want one, Mrs. Meredith? No. My, we're sure having a hot spell. Uh, mind if I open the window? Ah, there, that's better, isn't it? Shut up! 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 Shut up!
did it! He did it! He did it! He did it! He did it! Don't move, Vern. You want to be healthy for your trial, so don't move. Cover him, Matt. I've got a phone call to make. Uh Uh-huh. Operator. This is the police department. Give me the warden, the state penitentiary. What time is it, Matt? Don't get yourself excited, Ben. You still got ten minutes. Police Lineup was produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and stars William Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Joseph Kearns as Sergeant Matt Greb. Music was composed and conducted by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were David Ellis, Jack Edwards, Jester Hairston, Byron Kane, Vivian Baber, Lillian Bioff, Herb Butterfield, and Anthony Barrett. You've been listening to Police Lineup or before you have passed the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen in again next week when Police Lineup brings you... This will help me get my little girl back. We want you to identify the man you saw talking to her. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I call off the number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.